Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Affinity Photo and the Field Blur. Field Blur creates lovely blurring images in certain parts and sharp parts of the image in other parts. So where can you find it? Filters and go down to Blur and Field Blur. It's also available in the layers as well. So that's quite useful. And that's a non-destructive effect. This is a destructive effect. So it will, as soon as you apply it, that's that. So Field Blur, what have you got? You've got three settings here. You've got Global Radius, and I'm just gonna push it up to the max. Just might as well for visual effects. Now everything in this picture is blurred. And the reason why, you've got this little handle, and it always puts a handle right in the center. It doesn't know where the object you want. So you might have an object here, or an object there, maybe that. I've got this tree, obvious tree there, but let's say this bit over here. I want that to be not blurred, or not so blurred. I want the rest of the image to be blurred. So how to do that? Well, what you can do, you can add these pins. And you can add pins near to it. There's another, or oh, handles. I always call them pins. Some applications call them bins, some applications call them handles. These are called handles. So you've got handles there. And what you can do is you can then add another one there. So you've got that done. This one, I'm gonna reduce the power. I'm just gonna reduce the power down quite low. And as you see, you can do that. That, don't, unfortunately, that's in the way. <laughs> you, can't, you can't change the opacity of the, of the handle. So the handle's sort of in the way to block the image. But you can see you've got fairly, at that point, you can just change that selected handle level down and it's fairly-ish sharp. Whereas all the rest of the image is fairly blurred. Likewise over here as well. And it's both sides. And you can also, if you want to, you can always add another handle there. So you would set the value up there. And you can say around it, the rest of the image is blurred, whereas that's not. But you can, of course, move that out. So as you move that out, see what happens. You can see it. Just I'm moving it there. So I move it further away. And of course, the further away, this influence kicks in. And obviously, it becomes a bit sharper. So you can make it go further and further and further, further until it's not blurry at all. Now, you can obviously just delete them as well. And I haven't tried that, but yes, just delete. Simply just delete by just pressing delete key. <laughs> all the time I've done it, you know what? I haven't removed one. So I just suddenly thought, you know how to, how to remove it? Well, delete key, press delete key, get rid of it. When you select it, you'll notice there's a difference because what happens, you get this sort of two ring sort of thing, whereas this one is just a one, just one. So that's the, the current. Why they didn't do a sort of change of color or something, maybe flashing, so it's really even more obvious. But you can move it around, and you can move this around as well. So you see, you move that around, that you can see the, the impact of that. It's a bit like the deform. That's why I keep always thinking of more pins and handles. It's a very similar sort of way of doing it, and you can move that around. So say you decide, you know what, I want that tree over there. But of course, because there's no, these blurs over here. This is quite sharp as well. But I don't want that. So what I can do, I can move that over. Now the trouble is with the tree, of course, it just extends. And so I'm just going to go there. So I'm just going to push. And again, the key thing is if you select both those is these are quite, and this is very low. That's the key thing. Set the selected handle, the one you want sharp to be very low. These ones, push it up to the max if you want that. And you can, of course, move it away. And you can always vary. You don't have to keep it that. So you can have less or more blur. And of course, what you can do, you've got this one as well. So you can move that one over. Now, of course, at the moment, it's blurry because it, I wanted a blur above. But what you can do, you can always reduce that down as well. And you can always, of course, if you suddenly think, you know, what that... You can always add... Now, I don't know how many pins you can add. Probably quite a few. So you can add a pin there. And you can select that one. And then you can go up to here. And you can, again, if you want, push that up to the max. Whereas this one is fairly low. And again, this one, you can come up there. And you can go all the way up the tree. Maybe not go too close to it, because then you get, but you can see the general gist of the thing. This one, selected very low. These ones, very high. And you can modify this. And it does vary sort of how you go. So it's not always the thing that's, you can just see the effect as you go down, you go up. So I push that up to the max. It actually extends further when you actually reduce the power, which seems to be slightly counterintuitive, to be honest. So it's best to keep it about there, just to, oh, or full on. 
you don't want it too far. But you can see what happens if you put too close. So you go like that, and you got then you got blur in there. So it does. It's a bit of a trade off. How many pins you want? How many areas you want to keep really sharp? Just so keep that there. Keep that approximately about there, and then you've got this nice sharp tree there. Now, what you can also do, if you could probably go down here as well, I just go down there, and I want to reduce that down. And again, because of course you've got this area now becomes free of the blurring, you can have to add another one, and then push that up, and so on. So, on. so you can see you can have multiple points of interest if you want. Perfectly reasonable as well. That one's sharp. It's all blurry because of the pins. I put pins around, and they're all full on power. But uh, you, like I say, vary this setting just to vary the actual effect. So what you can do, of course, after all that, unfortunately there's no preset. And it would be nice, but I suppose they probably think, well, obviously every image is different. What's the point of having a preset here? But I mean, I think the preset would be good because you might come back to it and think you've got the same image and you want to apply it again. And then you have to do all the settings again. So it would be nice. What you can do, of course, is you can save it as a macro. You can always, there's macros here, so you can always record so before you start this thing, you can record it so you've got the macro and it's got all the rest handles stored away in it. So you've got your image there. Or what you can do, you can always apply it again, but you can also go to layer and you say, oh, fade fill blur. So at this point, you can see by fading it, you get more sort of like dreamy look, sort of a sort of not blurry, but still there's enough blur in it. Maybe you could add some grain or something, whatever as well. But also you've got blending modes, so you could go for darken, which creates some. Multiply, create a nice sort of smudgy sort of uh, darkness, which I think is quite nice. Or color burn, even better. So you can create some very weird, unusual design. And you can vary, obviously vary this, make it very dark, or go like that, linear. And you can try them out, obviously lighten. Sort of very nice. And of course, difference, which isn't so good with this one, but you can go through the other ones. Or oh, what's that one? Divide. Probably not. I'm just going to go with normal and apply. And you can always apply it again. So repeat for fill blur. And you can see you've got it again. Repeat fill blur. And you can still see because of those pins that are still handles. Handles, I've got pins on. Handles. And you can do that. And you can keep that. And you, But you get a slightly odd sort of circular design and you can tweak that by changing the various power etc well what you can also do obviously once you've got this of course you can always create it on a layer perfectly reasonable well do sort of similar to the next thing which i'm going to just do by undoing all that and i love when i was doing the taking the photographs i of course left the time i don't normally with my photographs leave where, where i was so 2016 it's only afterwards I'd suddenly noticed it. I thought, oh, got all the dates on them. Hmm, not something I want. Right, layer, and then go down to new live filter layer, and blur, and fill blur. Probably in a different position from the previous one, but you've got fill blur there. So again, do exactly the same. So you can move that, set the global radius, so push it up, select, select it there, down, and you can vary these. And then you can add another one. And you can add one on the side. That's the one that's currently selected. And you can push the, that full up. And you can go that one. And you can push that up there as well. Okay, vary these things. And you can reduce that down. And so on. So you can just tweak, just reduce it down to the point where you're quite happy. And of course, you can move it around. So you decide, you know what, I want that bit to be more sharply in focus than this bit. But as I said, you can add additional pins all the way up and just depending on the object, obviously you're trying to blur out. But I'm, I think that in some ways it would have been nice. I'm surprised they didn't actually, which is normal with uh, Affinity Photo, sort of an interactive sort of, so you can see the range sort of thing. So you could get a sort of an interactive sort of circle or ellipse. So you could sort of vary it. So maybe that would have been nice to be able to elliptical sort of interactive design. However, that's not available, so uh, obviously you work with what you got on here, and you can vary those. What you can then also do, you of course got the blending modes here, and you can vary those, and you can go through, you know what, I like lighten. And the thing about this, which is different from the other thing, is that it's remembered. 
So when you close it, and if you go to layers, you can see over here in layers, you've got field blur. So you can select it, double click, and it eventually goes up. And you can tweak it in other ways, of course, but I'm just going to show you. So you can bring it back and you've got all the same pins in exactly the same position. So you can vary it again. So in many ways, the live one is probably the better option. But also what you can do, deselect that, deselect the whole thing. Of course, you've got layers, you've got new adjustment layers. You've got various things here. So you can go with maybe curves, let's just, or whatever, just go with something, gradient map. You can add others, obviously that's garish, but uh, say, just for example, not the world's greatest picture. However, what you can do, you can also add adjustments on top of these layers and combine them in multiple ways. And of course, at any point, you can always remove it. Well, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Always adding new tutorials all the time about Finity Photo, Photoshop, and many, many other applications. Also, please subscribe to the Graphic Extra channel. Always adding nearly every day. Also, check out the graphicextras.com website. Got loads and loads of tutorials about Finity Photo, Finity Designer, and many more as well on there. Also, if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments. Always appreciated. Also, a dislike or like. Thank you much.